Hello and welcome to lecture 36 of Math 2003. So this will be actually the last lecture uh, as part of the course and we're going to finish up with one of the big theorems in linear algebra which is namely the singular value decomposition. So we're going to use kind of a whole bunch of results that we've learned in chapter 7. So this, maybe I'll put this right here, this is the, the last lecture. And depending upon how you feel about the course, Maybe you're really happy that we reached the end of the course, or maybe you're really sad that we reached the end of the course. Okay. Now, there's always more linear algebra for you to study afterwards, but uh, uh, I do hope, uh, and I'll say some more at the end, that you've enjoyed uh, these series of lectures. Okay, so kind of what I just said here is that today what we're going to kind of end up on is a fundamental theorem in linear algebra, which is the singular value decomposition theorem. And if you take in math to LA3, you might have actually seen it there in terms of matrices. And we're going to try to talk about what it means from the point of view of operators. So like myself disappear here. And let's just kind of start with some of the setup. Okay, so we're going to kind of explain the statement of the theorem, and then we'll talk about the proof. So given any uh, operator t, the singular values of that operator are the eigenvalues of this operator. Okay, so remember this is the operator you get t um, composed with its adjoint and taking its square root. So it has a unique square root because the operator inside is a positive operator. So it has a unique square root where each eigenvalue is repeated the dimension of its eigenspace times. Okay. Now we don't really kind of worry about so much uh, about, or in our examples, we won't see this happening too much. But what you want to think about is if you think about this in terms of the matrix, what you're doing is you're finding the matrix associated to this uh, value, um, operator. And because it's a diagonal matrix, it can be diagonalizable, diagonalizable and it's the eigenvalues that show up there when you're counting with the correct multiplicity. Okay, and I thought I'd just do an example here. Uh, from the last lecture, um, we said, okay, let's look, and we'll look at this example through today's lecture. Let's take the operator whose associated matrix looks like two minus, <coughs> excuse me, two minus one. Sorry. Sorry, I got something stuck in my throat there. <coughs> uh, the matrix whose associated matrix is two minus one, two, two. Then, um, from the last time, we actually figured out what the matrix of the square root was. So you might want to flip back to the previous lecture. And we showed that this matrix was 2.8, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 2.2. And it has with eigenvalues 2 and 3. So those are the eigenvalues. So these guys here, <coughs> these guys here are the singular values of the uh, original operator that we started with. So it's not the eigenvalues of t, okay? So I want to make that clear. Note that these are not the eigenvalues of t. So if we were to use kind of some of the results from math 1b03, how do we find the eigenvalues? Well, we need to find a determinant of this matrix right here. So, and we want to set that equal to 0. So this expands out to give me uh, lambda squared. Um, I'm going to make sure I can do all my arithmetic. Minus 4 lambda uh, plus 2 minus 2 equals 0. Um, oh, oh, sorry, there should be that. Sh yep, that should be right. And I feel like I messed up. Yep, that should be a plus. So that should be a plus 6. Okay, and then you can use the quadratic formula. And you can solve this, right? So this is 4 plus or minus uh, minus 4 squared uh, minus 4 times 6 over 2. Right, so we get... 4 plus or that's a times that's not 46 so we got 4 plus or minus 16 minus 24 over 2 and if you do all the simplification you get 2 plus or minus 2 uh, root 2 times i so the singular values are not the singular values are not the uh, 
eigenvalues of this matrix. They're the eigenvalues of the matrix that you get by looking for the square root. And we, we saw in the previous lectures about how to find that. And so the eigenvalues are two and three. And in fact, the singular values, right, because they're coming from this matrix right here, which is positive, they all have to be um, uh, real numbers. Okay, so that's that's kind of an important number. Okay, so, oh, so I think that's actually the fact that I was going to just say right here. Um, so since it, this is a positive operator, all its eigenvalues, i.e. the singular values, are positive, uh, are non-negative, because zero is allowed, are non-negative. And since this operator is adjoint, right, because it's positive, so we're going to remember, if you're thinking about terms of matrices over the reals, that means that it's um, uh, symmetric over the complexes. It means it's what would be called Hermitian, or that it equals its conjugate transpose. Uh, and we know by the spectral theorem that you can actually diagonalize this, right, that T with LV has dimension V singular values. So normally when you have an operator, you don't, you're not sure if you have enough eigenvalues kicking around, but when you make this operator, you do have enough eigenvalues count, uh, kicking around. It's assuming that you counted with multiplicity, counted with multiplicity. Okay. And the reason is because this matrix right here has, has the correct number of eigenvalues. Okay. So that was kind of the setup. And here is the singular value decomposition theorem. And I'll, I'll just say what it is. And then after the break, we'll come back and improve it. So what it says is take any operator and you know it's singular values, S1 through Sn. So it has that many. And then there exists two orthonormal bases of our vector space V. So they, they may not be the same orthonormal bases because orthonormal bases are not unique, unique. But there exists two orthonormal bases of V such that you can rewrite your operator TV as taking the vector V and you can describe where it gets sent to in terms of these bases in a very nice way. It's the first singular value times the inner product of V and the first basis element multiplied by the first basis element. And then you do you keep repeating. So just pay attention here that these are the constants. Okay. So normally when you're writing a map, you want to know how does the vector V get sent over to the other side. And what this is saying is that you can pick for any operator, if you pick your bases right, there's a nice way of taking V and sending it over to itself, and you can figure out where it gets sent in, in terms of these bases. So this works for all V, a little V in our vector space. So when we come back, we'll talk about the proof for this, okay? And just one last thing is, just wanna point out these are constants, right? So all the underlying things are constants, so you can easily figure out what this expression is in terms of the basis, F1 through Fn. So I'll see you after the break.